Yes, judges. Hello, ah, no, Dan. How are you doing? You all right? Well, right? you, bro. I'm actually watching the football, mate. This Surfshark VPN is a lifesaver, mate. You can watch the football with a dodgy Wi-Fi, even at the Emirates when you've got a back, big crowd there and everything like that, watching the football. Unbelievable. Easy to set up? Well, it must be if you've done it, mate. Oh, very, very funny. Even abroad you can, like. You can watch all your favourite programmes. It's like being at home, mate. And that's exactly what you guys can do, too. Click the link in the description for Surfshark VPN. Let's talk about the manager first because there's a lot of players that I believe need um, talking about. But I just want to ask a simple question to everybody. Why did we change the system? Because I don't mind playing different players, Lee. I expected yeah, to see yeah. rotation. I remember saying to you that my predicted 11 had Thomas Party in it, had Tommy Yasu in it, had Martinelli starting. And none of those things happened because we played a different system. We started Trossard and Jesus, who both come on against Bayern Munich, which I wasn't really annoyed about, but I was surprised about. I also felt that with Rice in the six, it really means this season that the only time that we need to do that is if Jorginho or Party are both out. But playing Havertz back in that midfield, where he wasn't good across the months of September, October, November and December, seemed like we were going to go backwards, and we did. And I actually looked in the second half and I thought to myself, is this Arsenal out here or is it Stoke under Pudis? Because we were just getting battered. It was just one team versus the other, men versus boys. Unai Emery, we sacked because he wasn't good enough. And in four times that he's played us, we ain't got one win off of him. Arteta has not been able to get anything but scored by our ex-manager. And it was poor at Villarreal and now it's poor at Villa. I look at the system, I understand that he likes somebody to invert. But you can't tell me that when there is a situation where a corner is taken, you have your left back playing right centre back with your right back. And then the left back space is completely left. Declan Rice, maybe you should look around him. Maybe he's got to have spatial awareness. I agree with you, didn't look right, didn't look fit, didn't look the same. But Zinchenko had one of the worst games I've seen in a while. And then I asked the question, when was the last time he played well? <laughs> Has he had a good game this season? I can remember one, Burnley at home. That's it. Can't think of a good game he's had. Gabriel Jesus, 22 games, four goals. Is he Ben Teke now? Because that's the form that he has, or used to have, that we laughed at. So Jesus and Zinchenko... When I spoke to people I know that support Man City, said, we ain't really bothered about them going. They might do all right at you, but they've never really been first teamers. They were squad players for us. And I don't really feel that we can't upgrade upon them. And they've got Nathan Ake and Gvardiol and Haaland now. And we're left with the ones that they didn't want. And we're trying to play them in the first team. So it's no real wonder that they ain't now getting in our first team or wanted in our first team because they weren't wanted in Man City's, the team that we're going up against. Mikel Arteta's system, unfortunately, that consists of those two players that he likes to you know, play and try and work with, I think cost us yesterday. And at the time, I saw a lot of individual errors as well, which we'll come on to. But I just asked the question, why did Mikel change it? Did we look at the Bayern Munich game and get that worried about it to think we're going to mm. have to change this? Did he look at the game on Tuesday, Wednesday, midweek and think, I want to try something here because it might then work against Bayern Munich? If that's the case, Lee, that's poor from him because he's basically putting his eggs in the basket of the Champions League ahead of the Premier League. It's a very, very, very different scenario playing Bayern Munich at the Allianz to Villa at home. And I'll make you right. Our home form this season has been poor. I've seen poor games at Fulham at home. We haven't beaten them home or away this season. I've seen poor games at Villa at home. We haven't beaten them home or away this season. I've seen us now go uh, at home against teams that Let's be real. I've been excited about Lee going into it. Tottenham I was. Bayern Munich I was. Man United we had to get a last-minute Declan Rice goal at the corner to beat them. And they've been shocking this season. So it ain't been great. It ain't been great. And I just worry because this was the game I did not look at as us dropping points. But what's more worrying, Judge, is I do think we'll drop points still. And it weren't in this game. It was the potential slip in the North London derby away or maybe Man United away. I weren't looking at Villa. So now that we've dropped points on top of what I think we're going to drop points off, 
that is my kind of reason as to why I think this title might be done now. And that's where I'm at, man. That's where I'm. That's what I'm feeling. So Arteta, he needs to take a bit of blame yesterday, Lee. He does. Oh, hundred percent, he does, and and um, and rightly so. I, 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 I've looked back at everything, and I've, I've I've listened to what a lot of people have said on social media and in groups and things like that today. And you know, he has to hold his hands up to that. There's no two ways about that. Now. I'm I'm not on this board where you got like I'm I'm hearing people saying oh sack the manager and get rid of him and all that. Look, listen, I know Curtis said about that um, on his stream yesterday, but that's just f- f- sheer frustration at the moment in time. We all say when you go to games, we all say things that well, probably we shouldn't do and say and whatever like you know, and that was the case there. You know, what I mean, and uh, listen, I, I I get that, I get that, you know. But once the dust has settled, there's been some very, very good comments in there, what I've seen. We play tw- two more times before City play now, so we can be four points in front of them. Like, you know what I mean? Like That is the thing now we've got there. This is where Mikel Arteta shows his metal now. And are, is he good enough to take us to the next level? We go to Wolves. We smash Wolves. We then go and beat Chelsea at home. And then we see what Manchester City do at Brighton. Right, that is where we have to take it now. Like, you know, we have to put pressure on Manchester City now. It's no good going to the next game and losing points and Manchester City then going, and then Manchester City going and lose it because they know they can afford to lose games and whatever. We must put the pressure on now for the next six games. And if it's not good enough, it's not good enough. And then we'll have to look at what we have to do. But I don't, and, and, Someone said, I think, made a great point today, like, you know, I think it was Tom on one of the groups said, yeah, we've bottled it, haven't we, after 10, 10 wins and a draw, uh, in, in, you know. Um, and, and the reason we, we've had to win those 10 games and a draw to get in this position because of the poor run of games before Christmas, you know what I mean, or whatever and whatever. And and that 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 that's the thing, Dan. Like you know, what I mean, it's been difficult. You can't really ever go too much at the players because or, and the team because it's just one poor performance, and you can you, you're going to get that. And I get I, I get that, but you you're dead right in what you're saying there. Why change the system? What you could have done in that game there was say right, okay, uh, I'm 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 going to play Jesus, right. But I'm leaving out Havertz. That's that should have been the job. That should have been what he done yesterday. Like, or you play Havertz and you leave out Jesus, or you play Jesus wide, or you play. You know, once he made that decision that Jesus was going to play up front, he then has to say right in that midfield. Thomas Partey's coming in, or I'm going to bring in uh, Smith Rowe again, or, or, or whatever. And, and he didn't. And he didn't. And I think that when you've got a flagging, or not say a flagging, it's a wrong word to say. A tired Declan Rice, who uh, you know, you play him in there on his own up against it. You know what I mean? He couldn't, he couldn't handle it. You know that it was that was wrong. Um, Shinchenko coming into midfield did did help a little bit, but uh, you know it didn't. That ultimately didn't work. Defensively, we've not been sound over the last couple of games. Um, and, and listen. People are going to go on about Shinchenko and everything like that. Like, you know, he come on on um, Tuesday night. We didn't concede a goal when he come on. You know, people go, oh, we conceded two goals. He, he wasn't playing in that first game. He was playing like on uh, yesterday. And we got caught on the counter-attack. And we'll look, they looked dangerous on the counter-attack, to be fair. Realistically, Kivya had a poor performance in what in in um, against Bayern Munich, I granted. But he'd done really, really well before that. All of a sudden, oh, no, that's it. Get rid of him. Like, you know, I, I, I just think, you know, it's a little bit harsh. And if you look, listen, uh, this is not hindsight what we're talking about. If you want to go back to see what I said, uh, Tommy Asu was my left back yesterday. That's who I was playing at left back. Like, you know what I mean? Right. I was, that's who I was playing at left back. Um, my my, my mid, I, I left, I left Havertz out yesterday. I, I said to him, like, you know, um, Go, go with uh, Thomas Party in the midfield, or or, or somebody. You know, I don't know why Thomas Party is not playing in there. If I'll be honest, it was the perfect game for him to play yesterday. But um, 
I'm going to give Mikel a little bit of um, leeway because I have thought about it a little bit. You know, he hasn't had to navigate Champions League and Premier League like uh, Pep has over the last three or four years and, and Klopp has. He's got that experience of that. And I don't care what anybody says, Dan. The, the Champions League is completely different to level to uh, the, the Europa League. I don't know if you went past the um, the armory and all that there. 20 cameras out there uh, on Tuesday night. I went past there yesterday, like three. You know, like Sky Sports, a bit of this. But, but there was loads there, like, you know, it's a different, different sort of um, atmosphere and everything like that, you know. Uh, it, but I, my disappointing thing of it all there was to, yesterday was that manager, players, and us as fans, Dan, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us up as well. We felt the pressure yesterday. I felt the pressure watching the game. You know, we've got to win this game. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I, 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 the noise atmosphere. I I don't know how you feel about this. The noise atmosphere in there wasn't. I didn't, it was nowhere near as big as because I was engrossed in the game. I was just focused on watching the second half. Second half shut the fans up a bit because they were nervy. And do you know what game it reminded me of actually massively? Last year, was it Brighton? 3 0 we lost. We got absolutely battered off the pitch. And I remembered watching that game feeling exactly the same as I did yesterday. A very, very similar circumstance about this time last year. And we were kind of like thinking we were down and out and we'd lost to Brighton. And it was because we'd just gone through that West Ham, Liverpool and Southampton scenario. We haven't quite gone through that because Bayern Munich was Champions League we weren't in. But it was very similar to that Brighton game. And in fact, I think Brighton was probably a bit worse because they battered us from kind of the fir third minute mm. onwards. Very with similar. Us. It was very similar. And that second half was very, 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 very telling. And I also believe that there's certain people that won't want to sort of admit it. But when it has mattered this season, we ain't been getting over the line. And I've kind of said that's why. And mm. look, let me be honest with you. Let's go into some of the players now. When it has mattered, it's pressure on. When it hasn't mattered, we've played very well. And what I mean by that is, let's take individuals. Let's not take the team. Let's take individuals. It's absolutely fine for David Raya to keep clean sheets against Sheffield United. Burnley, West Ham, 6 nils, all those teams. Brighton's, 3 nils. But when it matters against Bayern Munich, he weren't ready. When it mattered massively yesterday, because let's be real, Aston Villa at home ain't normally a massive game league, right? But it became massive yesterday because of, one, the timing of when it happens towards the end of a season in the last six, seven games. Yeah. And two, because of what happened at Liverpool at Anfield. That become a massive game. Because we could have, if we won yesterday... Pretty much, as far as Liverpool fans would have been concerned, put Liverpool out of a title race. Yep. And unfortunately, when it mattered, David Raya was poor because that first goal, he is all over the shop again, mate. Yeah. And I'm sick and tired of having to say to Raya, this is the guy we bought to upgrade massively on Aaron Ramsdale, and it ain't. Let's just have it right. It ain't. It might be a bit better, but it's not like this, is it? It's like that. Yeah. Between the two goalkeepers in terms of the quality. So I don't think that's the right the right move for me. We needed to go and get a world class goalkeeper, not one that played from Brentford that you know has never played Champions League football. Then we look in the mid in the in the defence. I know you're saying don't blame Zinchenko, and to a certain point I agree in terms of what he's being told to do. But defensively, this guy has never been good. And again, yesterday it proved why he's not good. The guy is out of position a lot. It is basically like you know when you're on Sunday League and you say to the lad. Let him float in midfield. Give him a bit of a role in midfield. That's what we're doing. But with our left back, not our midfielder. So our left back is never at left back. And yesterday, we got conceded by it because he was over at right back, right centre back with Tommy. Nobody knows why, by the way. I still can't work out where he's supposed to be going or what he's trying to do there. But Raya gets dummied. Zinchenko gets caught out and we go 1-0. One of the players I have been so, so pleased and proud of this season is Gabriel. And in the last two games alongside Zinchenko, he's looked sloppy as anything. The geezer smashed it against his back yesterday. Yeah, and it went yeah, straight to Watkins and they should have scored. He's been iffy. I haven't seen the same Saliba in the last few games. I've got to say it. Is the pressure getting towards the pair of them? Or is it a domino effect? 
Raya, Zinchenko, and then it keeps going down the line. Gabriel, Saliba, White, who you mentioned earlier, had to come off because he weren't amazing. I actually thought he was one of the best. I didn't know why he come off, but it's weird how we see it differently. Then I look in midfield, Declan Rice, not the same player in the last couple of games. Is it tiredness? Is it a mentality issue? Is he just knackered? I don't know. I've got no issue, no, no, no kind of answer for that. Martin Erdegaard, this is another thing that's key. For me, the best player on the pitch in an Arsenal shirt, Martin Erdegaard. Likewise against Bayern Munich, wanted it, really wanted it. When he came off, mate, it was so clear <laughs> in terms of the drop that it was scary. Yeah. And this is my problem, Lee. I've said this a few times and people say I'm saying it's some moaning. There is nobody on the bench that he trusts that can cover for the roles of Saka, Erdegaard, number nine. We ain't got one. Rice and Saliba. They're the five positions that we clearly need to some to sign somebody in in, in the summer. That is what we need. I see James tweeted it out today. Exactly the same positions. It's clear. Because you're Reese Nelson, you ain't getting a sniff because he don't trust you. You're Smith Rowe, you're flinging him on, but those performances are going to do him no favours going forward. You've got Jesus, we've got Eddie coming on in the 87th minute, looking like a conference player. You know, I saw Lee the other day said that it's like when a dog, you get a dog in a park and you just smash a tennis ball and the dog goes mental after it. That's Eddie. That is Eddie. That's what Eddie does. He just runs towards the ball like a nut, nut job. He don't know what he's doing. It was poor watching him play football yesterday. It was really embarrassingly cringeworthy. And I don't blame the kid because he's been at the club way too long. Yeah, we give him a number 14 shirt on his back and give him 100K when most players and teams would have gone, go and enjoy your career, mate, but you ain't for us. So it's not Eddie's fault. Fabio Vieira, 35 to 38 million. Where's he gone? Has he been sold? Is he loaned? Another poor season flop. Because if he's coming on in that position, it would make actually a little bit more sense than Smith Rowe, to be fair. Because he's the guy with that pass. He's the guy with that touch. He's the guy that if Trossard was Fabio Vieira at Etihad, I actually have faith for Vieira to cross that ball to Martinelli at the Etihad first time. So why are we not utilising him now? Has he just given up on his, that project? Kivior. Have we given up on the left back project with him now? It's all very confusing in Mikel Z, and for the fans to look at, it's not very transparent. So I look at that and I think, yeah, there's positions that we can still upgrade upon, we know, right? That's that's fair. But the system yesterday was essentially what let us down. And I don't want to be wild, and some people might say this is a wild take, but actually, I think we need a better goalkeeper than both Raya and Ramsdale if we want to win something. I also think that we need another centre forward. That is a proper nine, which I'm sure we'll get in a summer. And I'm kind of thinking it's time to say goodbye to Zinchenko. And maybe we will. Maybe when Timber comes back, the idea was to play him at left back and Zinchenko becomes a squad player. Maybe that was the idea, Lee. But, you know, with his injuries, we ain't got it there, right? But when Tommy Asu come on, I saw more from him than I did from most of our fullbacks in the old game. So yeah. I, don't know, I just think we got a lot wrong yesterday, bruv. And I don't know where we go from here because Wednesday's so important. And now everybody's lacking confidence going into one of the biggest games, well, the biggest games of the season. 